nice not going to attack me because it's all safe. <laughs> right, ladies and gents, as we begin, a nice work area, nothing to slip or trip on. Perfect posture is our start position. So you just want to place the feet hip distance apart. Have a look at your feet and try and make sure all ten toes are pointing forward. I know it sounds silly, but sometimes you tend to have one foot that turns out sometimes. So once you've got the feet lined up, just let your weight rock forward into the balls of your feet, back into the heels, and then rest with the majority of the weight sat into your heels. Then relax through your knees, and as you breathe in, just a little bit of length up through the spine. And it's like when you pull the head up towards the ceiling, like you're trying to create a little bit more space between each vertebrae. Now, when you pull up through the top of the head, just aware that you're not pushing the ribs forward, try and feel taller. So the ribs drop down a little, and then we're going to scoop under with the tailbone, so you feel that you're drawing your ribs and hips gently towards each other. So that helps to engage our core. We're going to maintain that little connection because it keeps it also in neutral spine, and it hides those lettuce cakes. <laughs> so from here, keeping your ribs down, just a little breath in as you lift up with the shoulders and then breathe out just to ease them back and down. Now as you're starting to move the shoulders, again you're keeping the connection through your core to maintain neutral spine and just let the movement come around the shoulders. Again, you're still starting to think about your upper abs holding the rib cage down. I'm just going to do two more circles here. The next time you circle, you're going to draw the shoulder blades down to the back of the ribs, keeping a gentle tuck under with your tailbone, just taking a sway. Oops, yeah, I've got the hiccups. As you sway forward, you're drawing the chin just gently back towards the throat. So, what you're trying to avoid is letting the head come forward as you sway. We're trying to just maintain that nice, strong set position and feel now all the deep muscles internally work to hold that position as you sway just the balls of your feet and then back into your heels without falling over. Now when you sway forward just try and notice that you're not letting the toes go to the ground. The knees are staying relaxed and your tailbone softly drawing under. Okay keep your shoulder blades drawn down to the back of the ribs. Just take a double arm float, let the arms float to shoulder height and then let the hands come back behind the hips. You can allow the heels to lift just an inch and then allow your toes to lift as you sway back. Breathing out through the mouth as you sway forward and then breathing in as you sway back. And just a couple more in each direction. So doing this exercise to begin with just helps just bring your mindset into your body, having that awareness of the posture you're maintaining as you move. So as you settle into centre, keeping your set posture, we're going to just move into tandem stance first, bringing your right foot in front of the left, keeping the hands pulling down to the back of the ribs, turn your palms to the ceiling. Again, making sure the ribs don't flare, we're just going to ease into our dumb waiter. Now as we're working into dumb waiter with tandem stance, you're keeping the weight even through both feet, you've got your tailbone gently drawing down towards the heels, and at the same time, you cramp the head, pulling up towards the ceiling. Now this time, as you draw the arms back, holding them behind here, keep the shoulders down and just push the hands away, but don't let the shoulders rise. And then pull the elbows back to the ribs and close. So again, pull the shoulder blades down, squeeze them together, hold the shoulder blades in position as you lift the arms. And then again, pulling the elbows back to the ribs and to the centre. So we're going to do four more there. Again, pull the shoulder blades down. Try and hold the shoulder blades down. Keep that little bend into the elbows. And again, you're still drawing your chin back towards the throat. So the ears and shoulders stay in line. Now what might want to happen is the back might want to round. And then when you lift the arms, the whole shoulder girdle lifts. Think about holding the shoulders down to keep the stability muscles working just in your mid-back area, just below the shoulder blades. Then when you finish your last one, you can float the arms down, reset your shoulders and then change your feet. Bring your left in front of your right, balance your weight again evenly, drop the tailbone softly down, palms face into the ceiling. Keep the shoulder blades drawn down, open the arms, gently press them away, pull the elbows right in towards the ribs and then the hands coming forward. 
breath into your nose. Out as you lift the arms, gentle breath in and out as you close. Again, think about the ribs. Sometimes it's tempting to push up with the ribs to try and lift the arms. So work within a range of movement where you feel you've got all that space set between the ears and the shoulders. You might notice all your weight drifted into your back foot. So you're just trying to get that weight evenly placed through both feet. And your last four again. Try and get the shoulder blades a little closer together. Try and hold them together as you lift the arms. And take the breath in. As you breathe out, draw the abdominals in, hold the shoulder blades down. Soft breath in, and then breathe out to close. In through the nose, hold the shoulders down, breathe out to press the hands away. Gentle breath in, and one last time. So straight away we're starting to find the muscles in the mid back, the ones that help to give us lots of stability through our shoulders, and then we can use them quite a lot later. Bring your feet in on your hips when you're ready, and take your ball. You're gonna have the ball on the right hip to begin with. Again, if you're not got the ball, just using the arms is absolutely fine. Drawing the shoulders down. From here, as you breathe in, you're gonna roll the ball down your thigh. And as you breathe out, you're gonna draw the ribs back towards the hips. The ear, the shoulder, hip, knee and ankle, stay aligned. And again, you're focused on keeping the weight even through both feet. Because sometimes we try and bend to the right, the weight shifts into the right to try and allow us to go further. And then you can see how the hips change position. So when you're in your centre and your tailbone's tucked and you're holding your square and you're gently pressing down into that left heel, you should feel then you create much more stretch between the ribs and the hips. Still very aware of the shoulders. You'll feel that you've got the draw down of the shoulder blades, the reaching down towards your back pockets. Then if you want to go a little further with that side stretch, hands to the head, keeping the space here between the ear and the shoulder. Knees again nice and soft. Gently drawing the tailbone under. So it's as if you've almost been set in concrete from your hips and below. And it just allows and encourages the movement through the spine. Slow breath in and a strong breath out. And one last time. And then from here, resting in the centre. We're going to bring some rotation into the spine. Keep the feet flat to begin with. We're going to breathe in, lift the arms. As you breathe out, place the ball in the left hand and turn your chest to the diagonal. Keep the hips facing forward. Breathe in, ball comes above the head. And then breathe out, draw both shoulders back and down. Now you can lift the heels as you lift the ball. And then place both heels firmly back onto the ground. Headlights are fixed forward, so that rotation comes through the upper body and you've got stability again through the hips. Keep a neutral spine so you have the abdominals softly drawn in. And feel like you're pulling the crown of your head directly up towards the ceiling. Feel the in-breath on the lift and the out-breath as you pull down. And again, two more each, in each direction, should I say. If you like me, you've got a lot of seam, you can't probably stretch the arms up. You can keep the heels placed on the ground. Breathe in with the lift. Breathe out, draw the shoulder blades down, turn through the upper body. So we're going to bring it into the left hand. And then this time, you're going to bring the ball down to your thigh. Roll back with the shoulders when you're ready. Ease into your side bend down to the left, gently pressing through your right foot. Tailbone still drawing down towards the heels. And again, try and keep the knees relaxed so you're not locking out the legs. The ear towards the shoulders, so you're allowing the movement to flow through the neck and through your spine. And if you want to go a little further, hand to the head. You can let your elbow point and almost reach up towards the ceiling. That again, just creates a little bit more stretch down that right hand side. Now breathe in through your nose, out through the mouth. Weight even again through both feet. And then maybe pushing the ball a little bit lower while pressing down through the right heel at the same time. Now when you come to the top, if you give your tailbone a little retuck, 
And then notice if you feel a better stretch in the waist, or maybe just don't go quite as low because you're holding a really strong neutral position. So as well as mobilising your spine, you're straight away work, work, working into your core muscles to keep the hips nice and still and centred. Last time, breathing in and then breathing out with a lift. Both hands back to your thighs, breathe in, lift the ball, bring it down to your right hand and add the rotation back through the upper body. So you're just rotating from one side over to the other. Keep the weight evenly placed through both of your heels. Again, just a little bit of softness through the knees. Add that heel raise if you want to. Now try not to push yourself forward, push yourself upwards. We're not going to the sweat. We're trying to work into the calves as you get a nice big lift through the heels. Bring the tailbone softly tucked under, so you're not allowing the arch to come into the lower back. And once more each way. Nice bit of work with your shoulders there. And then you're going to bring the ball all the way back to the thighs. Give the shoulders a little release. Bring your ball now to your chest. Elbows are in. We're going to work with just the right leg to begin with. So the feet are hip distance. We're going to work through our lunge. Shoulders are stacked above the hips. Take your right leg back. Front knee stays over the heel. Tuck under your tailbone so that when you lower your back knee, you find a stretch through the hip. Keep the abdominals drawn in and then just extend the arms. Flip back to the chest, rise up and step forward with your right leg again. Step back, tuck under your tailbone first, find the stretch as you lower your back knee, then gently press up with the arms, pull the ball to the chest, rise and step forward. Now the breath, breathing in, breathe out as you sink. Breath in, breathing out, pull the ball back to the chest, take a breath in and then breathe out to push forward. Heel raise is now your added option. So you took a look at the bottom, ease down into your lunge. If you can, lift the front heel, place the heel lightly back on the ground, rise and step forward. Elbows still pointing down to the ground. As soon as the elbows want to roll outwards, the upper back wants to round. So just by squeezing the elbows down, that's going to help to keep the engagement through the upper back and maintain really strong posture. Now, think about your neutral spine, draw the abdominals in. You can stay with singles, or for your next two sets, you're gonna stay here in your lunge, and we're gonna add on with presses. So four heel raises with the press, keeping a stretch through this back hip, so you're gently tucking under with the tailbone to feel the stretch through the hip flexors. Starting to feel the stability through that front heel, ankle lifting, rising and stepping forward. Just one last step there. Again, find the stretch first, tuck under with the bottom, core stays engaged, back knee sinks. Take a breath in, breathe out, lift the heel, breath in, ease it down. Try to avoid the front knee rolling in. So it gently presses out towards the little toe. And it just helps keep that alignment between the knee and the hip. Heel on the ground, rise and step forward. So you should feel the hips thoroughly stretched out. Let's do it on the opposite leg. So feet hip distance, ball to chest, bring the elbows in because when you bring the elbows in, it pulls those shoulder blades down as well. Starting with the left leg, just take a step back, front knee out to the little toe. Shoulders stay stacked above the hips, add in the press, bring the ball to the chest, rise and step forward. Breathing in through your nose, sink, breath out and push, breath in as you rise and breathe out to push forward. Two more, tailbone scooped under and again you should feel that lengthening the stretching down the front of your left thigh now. Now the whole time I'm thinking about keeping your shoulders stacked above the hips. Sometimes it's a little easier to tip forward. So again, even if you don't go as low, take it to where you can and still maintain 
really good posture through the upper body. With the heel raise, it feels right for you. If not, you may prefer just staying in the lunge, enjoying the stretch, or just adding that extra little bit of stability working. So the more stability we create through the ankle, we have a stronger base when we're walking, when we're running, playing sports. And sometimes it just helps to improve the flexibility and mobility around the ankle. And again, that can allow other movements to flow a little easier. So you can take your lunge a little further back. Again, strong scoop under with the tailbone. And as you press the ball up and not wobbling, think about holding the rib cage down. Sometimes when we press, we tend to use the back. So take it up as far as you can, just feeling the stretch through the front of the thigh. Rise and step in. Sets of four this time if you want to, or you can stay with those singles. Each time you press up the ball, but lift through that front heel. And don't rush. We're trying to hold that stretch in to your left hip. You're letting that back knee gently sink towards the ground. You're still drawing that chin back in towards the throat, so everything through the upper body stays nicely aligned. Oof. Nicely, there's that word again. <laughs> One last set of nice little lunges with a nice stretch, of course. So again, keep that chin nodded in. Try and press through the ball of the foot. Really pull up with the heel. Breathe out on each lift. Breath in as you ease down. Out with the lift. Breath in through the nose. Out with the mouth. And step in. And just give your legs a little shake. <laughs> okay, from here, ball next to the hip. Feet a little wider than the hips and roll your shoulders back. Into neutral spine. We're going to come into a squat so the ball comes to the knee. Breathe in, lift. And then breathe out to your squat. Now as we go into the squat, the hips sit back. You're in that neutral position. Chin's not in. And you're feeling the weight evenly in the heels. Sometimes you tend to push through your stronger side. So I'm going to make sure you're not allowed to do that. We're going to add in a knee raise. So lift the knee, then come down into your squat. So you lift your left knee, and then come down into your squat. Push up the left heel now. And try not to rush. So you're just holding your balance at the top. And if you prefer, you can just let your toe rest on the ground, and then step back into your squat. Find the breath again, breathing in deeply. Breathe out strongly so it helps with your balance and it helps to engage your core. Now when you lift the knee, try not to let the back round. So when you lift the knee, you're pulling up through the top of the head and making yourself as tall as possible at the top. Again, think about the chin, so gently drawing back in towards the throat. So it's maintaining that nice line between your ears and the shoulders. And we're getting nice and warm. You have one more each way. Just work at your own pace. And then you can step down with your last one. Roll back with the shoulders. Step your right foot forward. So let the weight Come mainly into the heel, connection through the ball of your foot, and come back a little, and you can have the ball to your knee. Draw the shoulders back, draw the abdominals gently in, and just allow the arms to lift as high as you can without losing your neutral spine. So you don't want to let the ribs lift as you lift the ball. If you have a strong, straight back leg, you're lifting the belly button away from your t-shirt, and again, you might just feel bringing the arms to shoulder height is enough. And notice you've got a bend in your right knee and the weight sitting into your heel. Now we add on a leg lift. So you just let that weight come a little further forward, but keep it in the heel. And you might want to try and lift the back leg. As you're lifting the back leg, you're very aware that you're not allowing that work to come into your back. It's quite easy to end up using the lower back. So what we're looking for is keeping the spine perfectly still 
and just letting the movement come through the shoulders and through the hip. Two more with that lift. Gentle breath in, out. Hold the ball just below your chest. Now keep the alignment through your spine. Just tap your left foot in and back without changing the position of your spine. Don't let the shoulders drop, pull them back. Again, holding the belly button gently up, away from the t-shirt. Now you're going to take your ball in your right hand. When you take your left leg back, your arm can reach out to the side. By bringing the arm out to the side, it starts to challenge our obliques, because these muscles work to stabilise that position between the ribs and the hips. As you're lifting the arm, just the shoulder height, no higher. If you need to take a rest at any point, you can take a rest. But we're going to try two more on each side. On this side, should I say. And then step in. I was going to combine both movements together, but we'll save that for next week. <laughs> we'll give the other leg a go. So again, it's the stability we're looking for through the left buttock. That's why you've got all the pain. The work, not the pain, the work. The right buttock. So your left foot comes forward. Right foot behind. Feet hip distance. And that bend in your front knee. Now, if your weight shifts forward, you'll feel the heel lifts and it becomes quite unstable. So as you feel the weight comes back and plants down through the heel, that engages your glutes, gives you a stronger foundation for your movement, and then the ball just in front of your thigh and the shoulders back. Ribs and hips slightly connecting, and again, just without moving anything else. So you can lift the arms. Again, shoulder height is your option. Notice your toes aren't trying to grip the floor. They might want to just give you a little bit of help. But what you're trying to do is keep the weight of the heel so you keep the work into your left buttock stabilising. If you want to add in that leg lift, you come a little further forward with your body weight but you keep the weight into your heel. Now again, still very aware that that alignment of your spine doesn't change. When that back leg lifts, you're squeezing the front of the thigh, so it's a nice, straight, strong leg. Then you can challenge your core muscles more by letting the arms come higher, but being very aware that you're making sure your core muscles are holding the ribs down towards the hips so you're not arching into the back. So if the back starts to arch, just reduce your movement. Hold it this time in front of the knee. Step your right foot in, just lightly tap your foot, and then step behind. Then when you're ready, as you step behind, arm to the side, breath into the centre. You might start to notice in your toes, trying to get a hold of the ground. So keep shifting the weight into the heel. Think about your upper body. You don't want that upper body to start rounding, because that's what's going to make the lower back ache. You want to keep lengthening. So what you're doing then is keeping all the muscles to the upper back switched on and maintaining that nice long spine. It's almost like you're still having perfect posture as you move. Four, three, and shall we squeeze into the bottom as you push the leg behind and your last one. And then stepping in to the centre. So now you know where your glutes are, I'm going to come into a wide squat. Now with the wide squat, the feet turn out five to five past the hour and the heels are outside the shoulders. Roll the knees back, so your knees are out towards your toes. Roll the shoulders back, and come down into a squat. Holding, arms float to shoulder level. Keep the left arm still as you draw your right arm back. Change sides, your right arm still. And we start to find that rotation again through our spine. So let's sit into the squat first. Tuck them with the tailbone, draw the tummy in. Keep the shoulders held down and see if you can let the head turn. As you're turning the head, you're trying to keep the hips facing forward. You're trying to notice the weight staying evenly placed through both heels, and you don't want the knees to start rolling in as you twist your upper body. So again, if you need to, just make that movement quite small. Breath in through the nose, out as you open. Slow breath in, let's not rush. Breathe out, draw the shoulder back, breath into the centre, and then breathe out when you rise. 
push the knees wide and gently push them back so you feel it out of thighs. Shoulders stay relaxed. As you're moving the upper body, try not to let the legs move. Feeling lots of stability through the legs. Now, if you want to work a little bit harder, you can bring the ball higher and bring it out to the side, into the centre, and then out to the opposite side. If you prefer, just keep the ball at shoulder level. Always use the breath though. Breathe in as you bring the ball down. Breathe out as you lift the ball. Take a breath in, out with the lift. Breath in, out to rise. Four left. Now again, even when you're bringing the ball down to the side from here, you can still turn your head, bring it forwards, and then turn to the side. I guess forward, lower the ball gently, squeeze into the bottom. And again, draw the shoulder blades down to the back of the ribs. So it's not that constant work, thinking about the stability and the alignment position of the shoulders. Keep pressing these gently out towards those little toes. Don't know if you've got two left or one. <laughs> Counting's are falling. <laughs> I'll know if you all stop it was one. But I'm going to do another one just in case it was two. <laughs> and we'll make this our last one. Perfect. Looking good. And then bring the ball down, give the bottom squeeze on your eyes. Bring the feet in when you're ready. You can give your legs a little shake. We're going to come into some core work next. So we're going to come onto the floor. I'm going to have the ball just behind the back. So if you come down into seated to begin with, we'll start nicely. We'll see where it ends. <laughs> so we're still going to think about the stability we hold through our hips and all the deeper muscles, especially our lower abdominals that help to keep the pelvis still. When you come up into your seated position, Bring your ball right in towards your bottom. Then you can have a lean back, so it's actually quite comfortable. The feet tip distance apart, but not too close with the knees, because then you're over-engaging your hip flexors. So again, as you take the legs forward, it just helps to release a little the hip flexors. Scooping your tailbone under, so get the feeling that you're pressing your belly button back towards the ball. Arms come in line with your shoulders. From here, keeping the shoulders down, and the ribs squash down towards the hips. You can start with a bow and arrow, just gently drawing the elbow back past the rib. Breathing in as it slides back and breathing out as you reach forwards. So that's your first option. We're thinking about the ribs and holding them down as the elbow slides back. Second option is to bring the arm out to the side. But again, if you're bringing the arm out to the side, your focus is your ribs and your upper abdominals, so you're not letting the ribs move away from the hips. I'm trying to keep your C shape held tightly. You can keep the eye gaze forward, or you can just let the head turn with the hand. Now, at the same time, you're holding that chin back towards the throat, so it's not letting the head come forward and the neck come into an awkward position. As you pull the chin back and the crown of the head slightly up, that's just going to help to keep that neck in nice alignment as you find that rotation. Two more each side if you can. If you need to rest, just simply take a rest. It is allowed. Last one each side. So you start to notice how your obliques work. Waist muscles as you're turning and upper abs working to hold the ribs down. Now from here, we're going to come into a heel slide. Arms are going to come forward. You're going to maintain that C shape. So again, you feel supported with the ball and the belly button pressing through. You're just going to slide your right heel along the floor and then come back and lightly place your foot down on an eggshell. Now, without rocking, you're going to then slide your left foot forward, a little hold, and then bring it back lightly onto the ground. You can let your heel just brush along the floor. Or again, you can keep the heel just hovering off the floor. Think about the ribs. Again, draw the ribs to the hips. At the same time, you're trying to tilt your pelvis slightly back so it keeps the work in the lower abdominals as well. 
See how seamless you can make that transition. So very lightly down with the foot, extend the opposite leg away. And let's start to add in the arms. So when your left leg extends, your right arm lifts and then come back into the centre. Again, nice and slow. So what you're trying to do is maintain this position in the spine and resist the movement of the arms and the legs. The arms want to pull the ribs up off the hips, but you're using those upper abdominals and you're holding those ribs down towards the hips. If you want to take it into a double arm pull, you can lift both arms, take a little hold, and then come back into centre. Lightly onto the eggshell with your foot, breathing in as you extend, and breathing out as you close. The last two on each side. Rest if you do need to rest. But again, think about that C shape you're holding. You want to feel that you're holding those ribs down towards the hips. One last time. And then from here, hold the knees, tuck in the chin, and allow yourself to take a little slump forward. So it just allows the back to have a rest and a little bit of a release. If you'd like to take your ball, we're going to roll back onto the ground. So you're on time, rolling down through the spine. We're doing the ball behind the knees to begin with. And we're focused again on the movement that our lower abdominals would create. Now, we want the ribs to be fixed, the shoulders down and the ribs gently press into the ground. The knees above the hips with a little pinch of the ball. And all I want you to do is a pelvic tilt. So you're in neutral, so that little bit of space here between your lower back and your mat. Breathe in when you're ready. As you breathe out, feel like a piece of string is tied to your belly button and it's been pulled down to the floor. And then breathe in, let it go. Try and think about pulling the knees in, think about pulling the belly button down. And when you pull the belly button down, that's going to tilt the pelvis back, which naturally brings the knees in. So think about controlling this movement through your tummy muscles. Use the breath. The out breath pulls the belly button down. The in breath brings you back to neutral. Now two more here. And if at any point it feels a little bit too much having the legs in the air, you can just bring the feet down and practice working on that pelvic tilt. Again, really good for the lower abdominals when you get that feel of pulling through with the belly button. Now, a little bit harder, you can keep the knees bent or you can have your legs straight. Either way, taking a breath in. Legs start just above the hips or just behind the hips. And you go into your pelvic tilt and then you see if you can lift your bottom a little and then roll back down through your spine. It doesn't have to be a big movement, but it has to be a controlled movement. So feel like the belly button draws down. Feel how that tilts the pelvis back. You can use the hands a little to help you come up, but as you come down, try and place one vertebra down at a time. Again, the out breath on the lift and the in breath as you release. Think about the chin, keep the chin drawn in. Because if you're a little tight through the back, what tends to happen when you draw the legs back, the head will want to tip back up to compensate that tightness in the spine. The more you keep your chin knotted in, hold the ribs and the upper body in position, then you're gonna create more stretch into the lower back. And don't drop the ball on your face, because it's never good. <laughs> it's a good joke, it's only a light one. Any point if you've had enough, you can take a rest and bring the feet down, but just try for a couple more if you can. Think about controlling each vertebra down, one on the next. And your last one here. And then your legs get to rest. You can drop your ball if you catch it. <laughs> Place your feet down on the floor. Arms are going to come up the head. Shoulders draw back. Breathing in, holding the ribs down. You're going to take a pullover. Now as you breathe out, you're going to tuck in your chin and reach up towards the ceiling. So chin's not in, breathe in as you reach back. Don't let the ribs flare here. But when you're ready to rise, you're gonna pull the ribs down, keep the arms just in front of the ears, and then breathe in as 
you lower. Now, if it's too much for the lift of the head, you can just work with the pullover here. Focus now on keeping the ribs still, letting the arms reach back, and then just bringing the arms back above the shoulders. Again, if you're okay with that crunch style, tucking the chin, let the head and the shoulders lift. Keep your neutral spine, because we've got both feet resting on the ground. For now, use the out breath. And then the in breath as you ease down. Okay, let's go with two more there. And I think you might be ready to bring the arms and legs together. We're going to stay with the pullover as we bring the arms and legs together. So your head rests, ball comes back above your shoulders, your shoulders down and away from the ears. Let's come to the heel slide first. So just with the pullover, sliding your right leg away. This is your first option. A little hover, lightly placing your foot in the eggshell as you come back to the centre. Extending the left leg, a hover, and then a strong out breath through the mouth. Breathe in through the nose as you open. Breathe out through the mouth as you close. Again, think about the distance you're holding between the ribs and the hips. Try not to let that distance increase as you extend the arm and the leg away. Now from here, we're going to bring the knees above the hips. So if you can, knees above hips, soft imprint. We're going to keep layering up till you've had enough. <laughs> when you're ready, breathe in, extend your right leg, hold the lower back down on the ground, and then breathe out, come back into the centre. So again, you're channeling those core muscles to keep the back in a soft imprint. That just means you can feel that contact between your lower back and your mat. We're going with one more on each side. And I'm going to add on a little bit more. Stay with this option, or just work with the arms, or just work with your legs. Or from here, you're going to keep the legs still, reach the arms back, and then bring the legs up a little. Chin tucks in, or between the ankles, or between your feet. Keep the upper body still as you lower your legs down. Then you come back into the centre, keep the legs still, as you roll back. Now let's do this slow, tucking the chin, ball between knees, feet, ankles, hold the ribs towards the hips, press your lower back to the floor and take your legs to the point where you feel your two muscles biting. Then bring the ball back in, keep the legs where they are and roll back. Now again, if you find it difficult to come all the way up and your head's, your neck's starting to struggle, you can just keep the head rested. But when your legs move, your arms stay still. And when your arms move, your legs stay still. So again, you're listening to your body and taking the legs to the point where you feel you've got your soft imprint, because again, you've got both feet off the ground. Breathe it in as you ease down. And then breathe it out on the way back up. Last two. Breathe in slow. And then breathe out strong. Big breath as you reach back. Out breath on the left. Slow breath in as you ease the legs down. And then a nice strong out breath as you come back into the centre. Take a hold of your ball, tuck in your chin, and take a roll up. Good work. <laughs> you definitely deserve a stretch after all those. Right, so from here we come into our seated position. Just bring the legs out in front and then you're going to take your legs just to where you comfortably can. And what you're looking for is trying to keep the backs of your knees down on the ground. Again, you can bring the legs a little closer if that helps. Bring the ball in front. Gently roll your shoulders back. And take a nice big lift of your chest. It's warm this morning. When you're ready, you're going to breathe in and just gently ease the ball forward. You're rocking forward through your hips. And then you can gently roll the ball back. So what I don't want you to do is when you come forward, just spend a lot of time really strengthening the muscles through the upper back to hold the shoulders back. And again, sometimes it's tempting just to use the back. 
and then their, muscles, their their muscles you want to keep tight and maintain your posture so that when you roll forward you still got a little bit of workout through the upper back keeping the lift through your chest gently easing forward and then restacking as you come back into the center and using the breath again slow breath in as you ease forward breathe out as you pull back and you can either stay with that little roll backwards and forwards or you might want to hold if you're holding just hold them to the point where you feel the stretch starts to ease a little and then see if you can lift your chest up a little bit more so you're creating more space between the ribs and the hips and again breathe in when you're ready and then breathe out if you're ready to go a little bit further forwards and then rolling back into the center bringing your left foot in towards your right thigh and let your ball come to the right ankle that's right <laughs> and now from here you might choose just to slide the ball across and come back into center and as you're sliding the ball across you're just letting the hips move away from your ribs your option is to reach over and then pull back so again by just adding that extra little bit of weight to the arm you get a deeper stretch into the left hand side and you're still gently pressing your left buttock down into the floor. And again, don't force it. Just feel that you're pushing the ball gently towards the ankle and softly reaching over towards the toes. Breathing in through the nose as you come up and over and then breathing out through the mouth as you ease back. One last time. Hold this one if you want to do and letting the hand just edge a little further with each out breath. And try and gently roll the shoulder back so that like opens the chest and then ease back into the centre when you're ready and changing sides. So then take the left leg out again, just let that right knee bend. It doesn't matter if you can't get your foot into your thigh as long as it's just feeling comfortable as you're seated. Now, from here, square the shoulders to the front. You can just let that right hand rest. You might find just rolling the ball down towards the ankle. Helps create that stretch between your ribs and your hips. Try and keep the ear in line with the arm. So it just stops that head wanting to come forward. Your option, again, is just to add that little pullover. And as you pull over, you're gently pulling your ribs away from your hips. You're breathing out through the mouth as you reach across. And just let yourself melt down towards the floor. Breathe in with the left, out to let it go up, and two more. And then with your last one, you get to stay and rest in the centre. So you can leave your ball to one side for now. Turn over, bring the hands to the floor, and let the knees come in under your hips. A little stretch for the calves, because they've done plenty of work in those lunges today. So elbows point back with toes, so you've got that squeeze back between your shoulder blades. A position where you can really lengthen through the back and you're not rounding the upper back. And then just take your right foot back, resting on the ball of your foot, not the ball, move that away. And you're gently pressing back into the heel. Now have a look at your foot if you can and try and make sure the foot's not turning out to the diagonal. So you're trying to point the five toes forward, then you press evenly into both hands. Take that little bit of pressure back into the heel of the foot and then see if you can push your rib cage forward now. And you feel as you're lifting your ribs up away from the hips again, you get a much deeper stretch into your calf. And then when you've had enough on that calf, you can change over legs. So all you have to do is just bring the knee in when you're ready. Knee comes in with the hip. Take the left foot back, check your toes are forward, square the shoulders to the ground gently pushing back into the heel again you might find the back wants around to make it a little easier so as you breathe in and bring that rib cage forward feel how the back becomes a little bit longer press into the hands and keep gently pressing back into the heel of your foot and then in your own time bring the knee into the center knee just under the hip and tuck under your toes now you can either just lift the knees here and gently walk the hands back 
Open walk the hands back and then lift onto your feet, whichever feels easiest. You're going to allow yourself to hang here for a few seconds. So you find that length back into the neck. You let the crown of the head hang down to the ground. And you've got that feeling again that you're holding your belly button up to your back. So it's like the tummy muscles are supporting your spine. In your own time, soft through the knees. Walk up with the hands or just let them hang down to the ground. Again, you have a tuck under the bottom. A nice restack through each vertebrae. And you come up taller than what you were when you went down. That made sense. <laughs> so roll the shoulders back. Take a nice big lift of both shoulders. Breathe in as you pull them up. And breathe out to let them drop. And again, nice big breath in as they lift. And out to release. In through the nose. And let it go. And applaud yourselves, ladies and gents. Well worked. <laughs> Very well worked.